It is not your purpose to do anything except be that conduit through which love extends itself. Hello friends, in this video I'm going to be summarizing lesson three found in The Way of Knowing. And this is the third book of the Christ Mind Trilogy, or The Way of Mastery. And these books are by J.M. or John Mark Hammer, through which he channels Yeshua ben Joseph, or Jesus. These are amazing books, amazing lessons. Highly recommend you check out the full-length versions, available free online at WOMlibrary.com, and also on his website, Way of Mastery Official. The main idea in lesson three is to decide to love or to decide to be a lover and have your world, all of your experiences, all of your encounters be your beloved. And that truly our only purpose here is to extend, to express that love. And God is love. Knowledge is love. And reality, as Yeshua uses the term, is love, is the truth, and is unchanging forever. And because you are a manifestation of this one love, of reality, of knowledge, of spirit, you are never apart from it. So there's always a part of you, of your mind, that is fully one with it. And you have access to it in any moment of that peace, of that certainty, of that silent knowledge, of that perfect calm knowing. There's a part that always remains free from the ego's and fear's authority. A part of you that is always at peace and that is willing without attachment to extend love, without hesitation. Because you, like a wave unto the ocean, have been birthed from that reality, emerging from that reality. You are one with it. Therefore, you are Christ eternal. That is unchanging and unchangeable forever. Within you, then, even in this very moment, there abides a part of the mind that already knows the truth that sets all things free. That part of the mind can be accessed at any time by anyone under any condition. It does not require years of cultivation. Although in the field of time it can appear that you're getting better and better at it, simply because you're enjoying it more and more and giving value to the fear-based egoic ways of arriving at decisions less and less. And that part of your mind that is still at one with this love, with this reality, with this pure knowledge, is unobstructed. It is an empty and open channel, he says. And nothing can ever obstruct it. Nothing you have ever done, no fear you've thought, nothing can ever obstruct it. It is totally free and open always. For love is always connected to itself, he says. What does this mean then? First, anyone who truly enjoins the way of knowing must make a decision to accept the atonement for themselves. I am one with my creator, now. I choose to fulfill my purpose by extending only the reflection of myself, and I am but love. Secondly, anyone who would enjoy the way of knowing must also look and embrace the very fact that their attention is involved in the world of space and time, the world of the body itself. But in the way of knowing, the world of space and time is seen differently. Rather than as something that exists external to the mind itself, the things of space and time are seen and embraced as that which is given of the Creator to the Son, to the daughter, in order to be utilized as devices for assisting Christ to extend love whether it be a pencil or a computer or a trip to your grocery store or a party in which you invite your friends to come and play. All things finally come to be seen as having only one purpose, the extension of love. So the world of space and time, this dream, the world of form, has no purpose other than to extend love. There's no other purpose. And he says this is why whoever comes to serve that voice for love finds that the whole universe conspires with it and helps it, helps that one extend more and more love to more and more people, to more and more situations, and supports that person in more ways than the ego could ever understand. Then he revisits an idea from the very beginning in the way of the heart, the first book, and that is, I need do nothing, because your only purpose is to extend love. And you don't create love, you don't master love, you simply allow love, for love is. And here we begin to touch upon the essence of my teaching. I need do nothing. This is not a passive state, by the way, of just accepting the fact that I need to do nothing and I'll just show up and follow my impulses and not think too deeply or wonder what I'm doing. I really don't need to do anything since none of it matters. That's not it at all. It means quite actively to learn and master the art you do need to do nothing to find that spaciousness within you in which you are willing to allow 
that channel within you that is eternally connected to your source to be the vehicle through which you receive your guidance and the pure recognition that you have no purpose save the extension of love. And what is the world's thinking of what our purpose is? And he reminds us that it's none of those things. It's not our purpose to get a house, to go to a good school, to get a good degree so we make enough money so that we love ourselves. It's not our purpose to stay in a good marriage, to receive a lot of money, to become wealthy, to become successful. Our only purpose, and he says this over and over again, is to extend love. Therefore, seek not to improve your life by adding even one cubit unto your stature, but rather seek to improve your life by realizing your nature as love. How do you do that? By recognizing that in each moment you are in the right place at the right time, and this is the moment in which love can be remembered, can be restored, and can be extended. This is the moment in which you can decide to listen only to the voice within you that knows how to extend love. Man, this lesson is constantly just giving me goosebumps. And whenever you know a fearful thought, realize, he says, that you're not thinking rightly, that you're thinking outside of the mind of God, because God is love. So an awakened mind, he says, treats every situation the same. Let's say one receives a million dollars. They would say, this must be the perfect situation that I'm receiving now. How can I extend love? Let's say you lose your house, your job, you get a divorce. The awakened mind would say the same thing. This must be the perfect situation right now. How can I extend love? And this is that same idea brought up in the last lesson, form versus content, and he reminds us of this. When the mind becomes identified with the form, that mind suffers. When the mind is liberated from attachment to form, it is free, for it is identified only with content or simply the reality of love. And since love is the reality, as he says, since it is our true self, all we must do is decide, decide to experience it, and it is there. It is always there. It is what we truly are. We are it. So simply decide, decide love, and allow it. In any given moment, you have the power within you to experience the reality of love, unobstructed, unmediated, now, without need of magical means. Without need for the universe to arrange itself in any certain way whatsoever, in any given condition, you have within yourself the power to decide to literally feel and experience love. Love then, or the experience of it, is a decision. It is not something earned. It is not something created. It is that which is eternally present now as the very identity of your being, the very life of your being, the existence of your being. So good. He then gives an exercise and says, right now, stand up, put your arms out, put your palms up, and simply ask, I receive the love that I am, the true self, the love of God right now. I decide and I choose to receive it and experience it now. You are simply asking to feel the reality and the presence of love. Then he goes on and speaks of self-love and said, it's not self-love of a smaller self, of the ego, but self-love as in the capital S, self as in the self within all things, because self-love is really the same as God love, loving God, for you and the Father are one. And then he says a very joyful thing, which is that you can always celebrate. If you're ever feeling off, just choose to celebrate, because you can celebrate, because there's always a good reason to celebrate. Whenever you are in doubt, whenever your energy seems to have dropped, try a dose of celebrating. A simple dose of celebrating that you are in a perfect universe, you abide as love, and the very fact that you have a body that has emerged out of consciousness in order to be used to extend only love is pretty miraculous. And you are free to celebrate that simple, essential truth in any moment. Then ask, Great! Who can I extend love to now? How can I experience love now? It's all much simpler than you think. He then brings up an interesting idea, which I've also heard from Bashar, channeled by Daryl Anka, and this is kind of a aside, but he says, food, interesting thing about food, so it doesn't matter what kind of food you eat, it matters how you digest it, or how you're taking it in, is it with love, or is it with fear? He says, those that really know that only love is real are not concerned what they eat or drink, because they know that it comes through the body and passes through. What they're concerned with is love, the amount of love they're treating that food, 
the amount of love they're abiding in in that moment. For love is what allows the transmutation of anything that comes into the physical system and allows it to be turned into that which supports the energetic wholeness of the physical system itself. It is far greater, by the way, to have what you call a bottle of scotch for breakfast in a state of total Christed love than it is to have 9,000 vitamins spread before you with one tiny little fearful thought. That feels true, doesn't it? It feels true to me. People that are like fully overly obsessed with what they eat, it's really all coming from fear. So it doesn't really matter what they eat because they're in a fear state. Those who enjoy their food with love, they're healthy. He then says, it is always in your best interest to love, to choose to be a lover, because that is the greatest pleasure. That is the greatest joy you can experience as being a lover of life. For you see, the greatest joy in life is to be the lover of life. For as you love, you experience love. Therefore, do unto others what you would have done unto yourself. And is that not to be loved? And when you choose to love in any given moment, you are the one who gets to receive the benefits of love first. He says, we are the presence given all the power under heaven, all the power to extend love. And it is not so much a duty, but a pleasure. This is the greatest pleasure you can experience, extending the Creator's love, extending this pure spirit, this pure essence, this pure love. You are the one who can enjoy each and every moment, regardless of the conditions. For the conditions are only the interpretations of the egoic mind. All events are neutral. They are there for you to love, that you might experience love. That's really how simple it is. It has always been that way, and it will never change. You are the lover. The world can be the reflection of your beloved. And then he asks us to look at our life and to ask ourselves, where have I withheld love? Where have I held it back from someone and to extend it, choose to extend it to that person, to that situation, to that thing? Thank you.